Welcome to the RJI Futures Lab, where we help you make your organization more innovative. I'm Ruben Stern. This week, insights from a combined conference in Chicago, ideas for serving data-hungry readers, and a new way to tailor audio news for commuters. The American Society of News Editors and the Associated Press Media Editors and Photo Managers held a joint conference last week in Chicago. Among the presenters was Tom Rosenstiel, Executive Director of the American Press Institute. His overall message was that news audiences might not behave the way we think they do. So what are the major trends we see in audiences? The first one is that people across generations are multi-platform, multi-source news consumers. The idea that young people get their news one place and that old people get their news a different place, read in print. That is a gross oversimplification that is less and less true every day. People in their 60s and people in their 30s are using lots of different devices including print and they are using multiple sources going to different news outlets for different topics. The idea that people have a primary news source that they rely on for most things is obsolete. And that's a paradigm shifting change. The second uh, concept uh, is that actually it's the topic that's the most important factor in where people decide to go for news. They go one place for sports about their favorite team. They go to a different place for national sports, a different place for weather. It's like we shop in specialty shops for a lot of things. We still go to department stores for certain things, but not for everything. In a time of scarcity in, in newsrooms, they have to decide what they're going to be great at. What are the franchise areas of, of either approach or topic that uh, would cause somebody to say, I need to use that news organization. They're indispensable to me. Because online, the web rewards specialization, a better app for something is always a click away, a better site. Another key point made by several speakers is that it's important to treat content and the product by which it's delivered as one thing, because users don't really see a distinction. For example, something as simple as an ad not loading properly might permanently drive away new audience members no matter how great the journalism is. We compile a recap of more insights from the conference. You'll find a link to that along with this video. The New York Times spotted an opportunity to help readers understand the whys and the hows of the news. The result is called the Upshot. Futures Lab reporter Tatiana Daria spoke with a member of their team to learn more about the kind of explanations readers hunger for. After Nate Silver took his data-driven blog 538 to ESPN, the New York Times tried to fill the void. Last spring, the Times launched the Upshot. The upshot grew out of conversations after Nate left of trying to figure out what to do and, uh, you know, how might the Times create something else that would, uh, you know, uh, satiate that interest that readers clearly have in, in the kind of analytical, data-driven, explanatory work that, that Nate does, that Wonkblog does, the Washington Post, that, uh, that people are doing more and more of throughout the, the Internet. So, uh, so the upshot is, is a vertical, it's, a, it's an offering within the New York Times site that, that puts all of this type of journalism into one place. I particularly cover economics. We have people who do politics, who do healthcare, who cover uh, all kinds of things. And, uh, and the common thread is not so much the subject matter. The, the common thread is how we approach these stories, which is to use a, a straightforward, plain spoken uh, style and, and just say what we mean uh, using, try and use, we try and use all the tools that the internet presents at our disposal, whether it's charts, interactives, and so on. With a dedicated presence both online and in print, the Upshot mixes analysis and data sets to explain complex issues to readers. One thing that David Leonhardt, our, our editor, has said uh, a few times that I, I agree with strongly is um, you should think of writing a, a story for, for the web the way, uh, the way you would write an email for a friend. You know, a lot of traditional newspaper journalism sometimes tied itself in knots with this kind of voice of God sense of authority, and, uh, and, and there's a place for that, and that, that can be an important feature of what newspapers offer. But I think also people hunger for a more straightforward Tell me what you know. Tell me what you think you know. Tell me the limitations of, of what you know. Uh, be honest with me. Don't be too afraid to draw an analytical opinion when that makes sense. Um, and, and that's the kind of spirit and tone we take to the upshot. 
Uh, that said, I think numbers and using quantitative techniques really is a, a big part of what we do. A number of us have a, a kind of numeracy and, and familiarity with how you use different types of data sets that in traditional journalism was was less common. You know, one example of that is um, a thing that was actually not part of the upshot. This publish, was published before the upshot launched, but by one of the people now on our team, uh, uh, Josh Katz, which is uh, the, the New York Times language quiz. That did more traffic last year than anything else in the New York Times. Uh, and, and that's the kind of thing that there's a lot of math behind that, but it's not, uh, it's not data-driven on the surface. Neil Irvin says he thinks more news organizations should consider some form of explanatory reporting. Now, that could be a, a reporter who's a beat reporter covering the city council, also stepping back sometimes and writing an explainer of what's the deal with this issue that they're debating. Here are the very basics. You know, these are, these are rich opportunities, and I think the success of some of these ventures is, is evidence that Readers really like this journalism, and this is about making a better experience for readers who can be better informed about their world. And that's what we all aspire to do as journalists. For the Futures Lab, this is Tatiana Daria. Although The Upshot employs 15 full-time journalists, Irwin says similar work could be done by smaller teams. Tribune Media's technology and innovation arm launched a new app called Newsbeat, which they describe as the Pandora for news. We spoke with their leader of product about how Newsbeat hopes to change the audio news experience. After sourcing print and online content from different publications, Newsbeat turns text into personalized audio streams. Users can choose articles and topics they're interested in from up to 15,000 stories, and a human voice will read it to them, even when driving. Here are the top stories for the day. The Federal Aviation Administration and Boeing announced Wednesday that the Boeing it's, it's uh, you know news that is fresh daily uh, plus breaking news as it breaks. Uh, we we have an editorial staff that is monitoring news and uh, and publishing uh, news through push notifications, and also the playlists that users get um, also are fresh as as of the minute. So if the news breaks, uh, the playlist uh, gets re reloaded and uh, you get the fresh news as well. With a staff of 14 people, including human anchors, Newsbeat is trying to compete with other similar apps and even with podcasts to offer listeners a different radio experience. We are not a podcasting app, meaning uh, we're not re-broadcasting uh, you know, a, a, an audio product that, is, uh, that has already been you know, on air. What we are doing is, uh, you know, creating this content uh, from, you know, uh, as it breaks. Um, and what that means is, like, you can get, you know, topics and interests covered in real time rather than waiting for uh, a podcast to, to come out on a week-to-week -week basis. Uh, this is not an anchor-led, anchor-driven news program like people are used to. This is, like you said, you know, it's, it's somebody reading news to you from a newspaper sitting next to you. That is the experience we want to drive. Uh, and it is catching on. Um, this is not intended to be a, uh, a, a format that sounds exactly like radio. Um, maybe we will get there somewhere, but uh, at the moment we don't feel that that, that is a format we, we need to copy. Newsbeat runs 30-second ads every seven minutes. For the Futures Lab, this is Tatiana Nazaria. To minimize interruptions in areas with weak signal and also to reduce data usage, the app preloads content when connected to Wi-Fi whenever possible. And that's it for this report from the RJI Futures Lab. I'm Ruben Stern. We'll see you in the future.